if I don't see tomorrow, I want to make sure this is the impact that I leave. I, I, I am positioning myself to be out there and reach more and more and more people. And uh, I, I'm really gearing up to doing more live events and more teachings and more retreats. I'm coming up with all kinds of ideas and exercises and, and different ways to bring people to generate that self-awareness, to, to find spirituality in everyday situations, I really, my, I would like my contribution to the world to help people be empowered so they can feel complete. Because I think when people fear, feel complete, when people are at peace with themselves, they don't have, there's no more war, there's no conflict. People are satisfied and they're more generous and, and they're giving. And I just heard this one. I love it. Not from the cup, but from the saucer, from that which overflows from them because they are in touch with that essence that is endless and bound, boundless. So I'm positioning myself to, to just bring this message to as many people as possible. And, uh, and I'm thinking internationally as well. Well, actually, I'm international. We're Canada and the U.S. already. There you go. There you go. Do you think that there's many of us who are striving to be complete? Because there's so many people who are, who are incomplete. But do you think there is this now overwhelming need to say that I want to be a complete person before I leave this earth? You know, that's interesting. And I've, I've been having this conversation is, is coming up over and over and over again, as I talk to so many different people lately. And I, I think that people are starting to realize that they can be complete and that they can be complete, can be complete on their own. I think um, the old mentality was that Jerry Maguire, you complete me. Uh, mindset that we need to be in a relationship to be complete. We need to be part of a couple or be, we're defined by our community and who our parents are, who our spouses are. And I think people are starting to realize that they are complete in their own right or that they have the right to be complete as themselves as the, and show up as, as themselves in life. And I think that's a very positive change because people are just alerted to the fact that maybe we have been going down the wrong path there and that we can choose something different and uh, become self-expressed and complete. And then we have more to give to the world and our partners and our families. It seems that way, right? Like um, I know when we first spoke, um, we talked about your relationships in the beginning before you and your current husband got got together and it seems that way right because you highlighted earlier on this is what you were told right this is what you grew up with this is how it was this is what you came around with and then you started to make certain changes but you were fortunate enough to catch it early on enough and then develop into the woman you are today um what about the, the people that are older who discover it then? Let's say their 50s, their 60s, right? Like my heart at times goes out to them because they're trying to navigate in a world that was different today, dating wise, than it was back then, right? Yeah, but the way I look at it is that it, it's an inside job. And when it comes to an inside job, it doesn't matter where you are, who's with you, as long as what's going on, your inner process is on the right track. It is never too late. It doesn't matter how old you are. I find it really funny that, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Father Richard Rohr. He's, he's a Catholic priest and um, he's one of the most miraculous teachers of the 21st century. And uh, one of his books 
talks about the first and the second half of life. And the way he talks about it is, is in terms of maturity. It's an inner knowing, not necessarily. He, he says how some people are young and they're already in their second half of life. And there's some people who are old and they never get to the second half of life because they remain spiritually and emotionally immature. So for people who are older, I don't think it's, it's, it's ever, ever too late. And regardless of the changing conditions in the world, you can still do your inner work and uh, e express yourself and develop yourself and evolve to your high highest potential at any age. That's why I love talking to you. The way you put it into words, it sounds so beautiful. It makes me want to be a part of that journey, right? <laughs> Where there's so much hope as, and there's so much focus and determination. As long as you're willing to put in the effort and the work, you can achieve whatever life has to offer for you. That's right. And, and there's really no age limits. And, and I really like to look at, at people in history and, and people who are late bloomers. Um, I'm a fan of Teresa of Avila. She was one of the greatest mystics in history. And uh, she started her mystical journey when she was in her 40s. And Cervantes wrote Don Quixote when he was in his 60s. He started late in life and we have a president who's 78 years old and we had RBG who was in her 90s still in the Supreme Court. So we are having some phenomenal role models as to what aging with grace is. And instead of focusing on arthritis pain or whatever your ailment du jour might be, shift that focus and, and remember what the possibility of you can create it at any age and look for those role models. I just love, I, and I'm always on the lookout for, you know, the old grannies, the pasta grannies on YouTube who still make their, their pasta from scratch at the age of a hundred. You know, these are the people I want to be like, I want to be the old lady, the young people want to be around.